Good evening, uh, friends. It's good for us to turn in our Bibles once again to uh, that great chapter in Luke 15. And today we're going to start looking at this parable that we know so well, the parable of the lost son. Uh, the parable, I say, is better entitled the father and his two lost sons. Now, uh, we are told in verse 1 and 2 why Jesus told uh, the three parables he told. We looked last time at the lost sheep and the lost coin, and we're going to come to the next one. But I want to remind you why we, we have these parables. Now, the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him, and the Pharisees and scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. Now it's because they have this contempt, not only for sinners and tax collectors, but also for Jesus, that he tells this parable, these three parables. And Jesus' parables have the ability to shock to expose and to really bring us to examine our own hearts. He is a master in using his stories to really twist and uh, 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 expose our thinking. When I say twist, I mean he gets into our minds so that he shows us how twisted we are so that we get twisted around by him. And that's what he wants, for us to begin to look at ourselves and see ourselves as we are so that we can begin to look at the world as he sees the world. And here we have this story beginning in verse 11, and we'll begin today to talk about this first younger brother and his outrageous, yet uh, really uh, rebellious uh, uh, actions. Uh, and he said, Jesus there was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had, took a journey into the far country, and there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to, the citizen, to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into the field to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. We'll stop there. Now, as I said, Jesus has a way to shock to bring in, as it were, something that is totally outrageous. This younger son's request of his father is outrageous. 
in especially a Middle Eastern context in this time, the father, the patriarch, was respected. His, his uh, family possessions and his place within society is all determined and displayed by his character and his uh, 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 honor and respect. For a son, a younger son, to ask for his father to share his property that is coming to him in, in, in such a blatant way, the response would be, you would be disowned. You have just shamed the family because he is looking his father in the eye and he says, I wish you were dead, that I can have what belongs to me. There's a certain arrogance, a certain shameless uh, disrespect. Jesus' audience would have been shocked and, and booed for this son's request. Now, the older son gets two-thirds of the property so, uh, and of the possessions so that the bulk of the, would remain within the family and the youngest would get a third. And what we are told, and this would have shocked them, is that the father does what the son asks. The father gives him his inheritance right there. And the son takes it. He impoverished the family. And we are told he goes off and instead of making something with that inheritance, he squanders it all. It slipped through his fingers. Here is a young man living for himself and himself alone, seeking his own joy and pleasure. Truly a self-centered, self-serving man. And it leads to utter ruin, doesn't it? He loses everything and when trouble came, he had nowhere to turn. He had no friends, no supporters, no one to help. And he ends up with the worst thing that a Jew can ever end up looking after pigs. This would be a huge insult to the Jews themselves who weren't allowed to have or, or eat pigs. And here he is. And he was so destitute that he could not even, that he, that, that he, that he had nothing, so much so that he longed for what the pigs had. How low can you go? He was longing to eat the pods of the pigs, but even that, no one gave him. And it's at that moment that he came to himself. Now this is very important. It is at that moment that the Spirit of God began to work in his heart and he began to see and think of the world in a different way. Now I'm putting it this way, it's a story, but this is how it works. He came to himself. He began to see his situation truly and he sees it in light of where he is now and what he experience in his father's household. That those who are in his position in his father's household have it far better than he has it now. 
which displays something of who his father is. How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here of hunger? My father's servants have it better than I have. But now, is he still that self-centered, self-serving young man? I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. I have forfeited every right that I have to be your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. That's what I deserve, to be a hired servant. And Father, that would be enough for me in your household to be a hired servant. And he arose and came to his father. He arose and he went to his father. He is drawn out and he goes back to his home. And the question now is, what will he find when he gets there? Will he be restored? Will he be received? As the story unfolds, we read, But while he was still a long ways off, his father saw him and felt compassion, and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hands and shoes on his feet, and bring the fattened calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Wow, do you see what happens here? We'll come back and talk really about the father's reception in a bit. But what I want you to see now really is how the son is truly repentant. Father, I have sinned against heaven and you. What he has practiced, he gets to say now. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. And yet his father does not allow him to say, treat me as a hired servant. His father restores him. Because the son has come in his emptiness and he has confessed his sin. He has returned repented, sorry, acknowledging his wrong. Have you done that? Have you seen your sin? And have you confessed it, acknowledging it before the Lord? John tells us in 1 John 1 uh, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is faithful and just. And the reason he does that is because Jesus came to shed his blood for our sins. So no matter what you have done, no matter how you have squandered God's good gifts, how you have misused what you have received from the Lord, you can come and you can come freely to him prostitute, tax collector, sinner, no matter what you are, come 
because Christ will receive you and cleanse you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you show us the willingness of your heart to receive sinners. Help us to see our sin and to truly repent of it, to turn away from it and to come to you humbly to ask for your forgiveness. Come and show us mercy, we pray. Help us to come to ourselves that we may repent. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you and your family tonight. Bye-bye.